there, everyone. I'm Tammy Riley. I'm the executive director at GNET TV, and today I am here talking with Ryan Scott. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. So Ryan is uh, the video and television production instructor at Southwest Tech. He's a skydiving instructor and the owner and producer of Drone and Video Services. But today we're not here to talk about video per se. We're here to talk about the Johns 57 project, which is really an amazing um, endeavor that I have just learned about. And so we want to share it with our community and hopefully you'll get involved. Can you tell us a little bit about Johns 57? Sure. Uh, so it, overall, to kind of summarize, um, it's a fundraising project that will allow, uh, allow us to help 570 cancer patients between the Bennington area and uh, in New Hampshire for Dartmouth-Hitchcock Memorial. Okay. So um, there's a lot involved, but really um, one of the big things is I'll be skydiving 57 times or more in a single day in order to raise money to help 570 people. Right, so, the, so Ryan's gonna be skydiving, did you guys hear that, 57 times in one day? Uh, and he'll be uh, doing that at Jumptown in Orange, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to us why you're doing this crazy wild thing of jumping yeah. out of a plane 57 times in one day? So the unfortunate side of the whole situation is that, um, so my dad was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and um, after a, you know, one, a little over a year battling cancer, he, he ultimately passed away. Uh, he was 57 when he passed away. Mm -hmm. So in order to do something in his honor, do something really big, that's kind of what the inspiration is. You'll see the number 57 a lot, or I guess multiples of 57. Um, so that's why I'll be making 57 jumps to help 570 people. I just didn't really think 57 people would was, like I wanted to help more than 57 people. Yeah, right. Um, so multiply by 10 and yeah. 570? Yeah. So tell me, you're, you're both, in, this is both um, inspired by your dad mm -hmm. and also an honor to your dad. Yep. When did you come up with this idea? Was it recently or was it you know, during his illness or how yes. did you come up with it? So while he was battling cancer, um, I actually was hoping to do it then, but he was diagnosed just a few months before COVID sort of mm -hmm. got going, mm -hmm. before when we were just starting to hear about COVID is around when my dad was kind of facing a lot of um, hardships. Mm -hmm. So I thought about doing something that spring, um, but that's when people were, you know, school was being canceled, people were staying home, people were told not to gather in crowds. Even aviation as a whole kind of was, it was significantly impacted. Yeah. Um, so the COVID. Yes. Scheduling, yes. So it, it, I had to just wait, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, it, so did you talk to your dad about this idea that you had? A little bit, yeah. yeah. We talked a little about it, yeah. but um, I didn't actually say too much to him knowing that we couldn't schedule it More because sure. of what yeah. was going on. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, so tell me, so your dad was a skydiver? He, he actually made one jump uh, in 1997, okay. and he, he, for like, for as long as I can remember, actually always talked about that, and that that's what inspired me to jump exactly 10 years later in 2007. Um, but he always, always talked about jumping again and jumping with me. Um, he even, as a more or less a last wish, he, he was going to jump again, but couldn't mm -hmm. according to his doctors. Mm -hmm. So one of his final wishes was to have us scatter his ashes um, while skydiving. So, because he didn't get to jump, yeah. that would still be kind of symbolically another jump so for him. So his last jump, so to speak. And, yep. and I understand your sister's gonna join you in yeah. that. And uh, is she also a skydiver? Or she's is never she first jumped. First time? Yeah, she's never jumped before. <laughs> wow, wow. So, so that's, that's really wonderful tribute to your dad and mm -hmm. having your sister involved sounds really special. Yeah. Um, so, and that's all gonna happen on July 22nd. Yep. And um, thank you for sharing that with us. Um, so after the jump, then you'll be focused on the nuts and bolts of the project, mm -hmm. so to speak, which is raising money for two purposes. Yep. And one purpose, I understand, is for the goodie bags or diddy, diddy bags for 
cancer patients mm -hmm. undergoing treatment. And then the second piece of it is a, a video piece of it. So can you talk about both of those pieces? Yeah. So people know how they can get involved and get a little better understanding of what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. So the first, as mentioned, is the Diddy bags. The reason for that, well, I guess I should explain what they are. Um, so while my dad was in chemotherapy at Dartmouth Hitchcock, he, someone, gave him a bag um, and it had things like water, chapstick, lotion, mittens, because his hands were cold, um, and other things that would kind of help him through the side effects of chemo. Mm -hmm. And it really meant a lot to him. Um, so what he ended up doing actually was using the little bit of money that he had to buy one to three of these per week or per treatment. And he would assemble these bags and bring them with him whenever he'd go to treatment. and he would just find people in the waiting area or in the treatment room and give them a bag and kind of explain why he was doing that. So, so wonderful. And he called <laughs> them Diddy Bags, um, which is kind of after uh, like bags that were given out to, to active duty military, for example. Oh, right. okay. um, so he, I think he thought the name was kind of fun too. <laughs> so that's why he called them that. But, that's really um, cute, yeah. In, so, the inspiration for that did come from something he literally did throughout chemo treatments. Um, so that's why we want to continue doing that and to give out at least 570 of these bags. Um, and ideally the goal is to actually purchase several of the items from local stores rather than either having donations or rather than um, just buying them from you know, like Walmart or something. Right. No offense to Walmart, right. but we right. want to buy local as much as possible. So if there's a, a local business that has something that they would want to donate to be yeah. included in the Diddy bag, you're open to that? And yeah, definitely. Looking for 570 pieces of um, something that would go in the, the care package yeah. for the and patients. Yeah, it's okay great. if it's a smaller number too, because the bags don't all have to be identical. Right. Um, okay. It's, you know, even if we have 50 of one item and 100 of another, the, basically, it's okay if the bags kind of change as time goes. Um, but yeah, ideally there would be 570 and um, we'll be assembling these bags and distributing them in Bennington and at Dartmouth. So in the two cancer centers. That's, that's really an amazing tribute to your dad's ambition, you know, in, in, while he was undergoing treatment, helping others. Yeah. And you carrying that on, I'm sure. Um, your family's really proud of you for that, Ryan. That's he would really be. Amazing. I just wish he got to, you know, experience that or see that because yeah. he, I don't know how many he gave out. Right. Um, maybe 50. I'm totally right. guessing. Right. But the fact that we can continue something that he didn't necessarily start, but he was doing a lot yeah. of because someone did it for him as well. But That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I think it'll be really cool. And so um, we'll talk about, we're going to talk about the video piece yeah. and then We'll talk about some of the partners that you're working with. Absolutely. And uh, talk a little bit about how the community can get involved in um, supporting John's 57. Sounds good. Um, so the video piece, tell us about that and, and how that came to be and mm -hmm. what your hopes are for that and how people can participate in that. So a similar story to the Diddy Bags. Um, my dad really, one of his goals also was to well, he was always known for kind of telling stories, um, and we had not, we didn't really have much of a record of these stories. Like, he would tell them, and that's that's it, really. We wanted to write them down or record them or somehow capture or yeah. document these stories. Um, so he was going to sit down with my cousin and actually tell his life story and include some of his like kind of fun and funny stories. Um, part of his. So part of like the issues with cancer affected his um, like his ability to talk and mm -hmm. communicate. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, there wasn't really time for him to sit down and do that because his health kind of declined faster than anticipated mm -hmm. um, all at once. So in I mean, fortunately, we do have video and we do have a lot of pictures and everything, but a lot of people don't have pictures and video, or not many video especially, um, or videos of of their loved ones. Yeah. So one of the goals is, or one of the things we will be doing is to partner, you know, with you, with Gina, and with Cat TV in Bennington, to have videos made of people that, who have been diagnosed with cancer and similar kind of life-changing illnesses, um, 
to really allow them to tell whatever story they want to, whether it's kind of a fuller life story, whether it's one single story, reading a book, reading a letter or a poem or anything, really anything that people want to do to capture their voice, their face um, for themselves and for their loved ones. Um, that's that's the plan. That's the idea. Yeah. And, and you can speak to the, being a video professional, you can speak to the power of video. Yeah. Uh, and it's lasting impact on, mm -hmm. uh, on telling a story. Um, so if someone wanted to participate in creating a video, um, what is the process for that? They contact you and you'll get yeah. an appointment set up? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so actually I'll be publishing on the on the Facebook event page and and on, the, on a website, um, I'll be publishing an email address right after the skydiving event, yeah. so I'll provide that um, where people can reach out. But the main way that people will be reaching out is through the cancer centers, actually. Um, in each of the uh, ditty bags, there will be a, a brochure that has kind of instructions or the starting point for reaching out to get um, to get a video made. To get, in get yes. involved in making the video and. Um, the videos are really personal videos for the family. Yes. If someone wants to share them to be distributed on GNAT TV or CAT TV, we're more than happy to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, our involvement is really just to support you with the production piece of it. That's a great so point. So just to be clear to people that it is a private video that you and your loved ones could take, mm -hmm. but if you'd like to share it with the community, you could do that too. So yeah. it's not required that uh, you're sharing it, um, and that's sort of how um, community media, GNAT, and CAT TV are supporting mm -hmm. Ryan's cause. So I think that's important for folks to know. Yeah, that's a good point because there's zero obligation, as mentioned, for anyone else to watch it. It's not going to end up on TV or YouTube or anything unless people really want it to be. Um, so they'll receive a, they'll receive personal copies on thumb drive, and if they want, also on DVD. So um, that will allow people to send the video to loved ones, to watch it at home, to share it, or do whatever they'd, they'd like with the video. Yeah, yeah, so so the project is really, it's really fascinating, the, the skydiving, the ditty bags, and the video uh, production, the personal video stories. Yeah. Um, and so uh, it starts on, uh, uh, it's, well the fundraising has already started, mm -hmm. uh, but the sort of kickoff event is July 22nd with the skydive. Yeah. And, um, that sounds like it's going to be an exciting day. Are you going to record any of your dives that day? Yeah, I actually, I'll grab it here. Yeah. Um, so us. I will be wearing my camera here. Um, so I, I'll say theoretically every skydive, um, as long as I hit record, um, every skydive will be captured on video. Um, so there will be an opportunity for people to see from my perspective, since I'll be wearing this, um, what, what it kind of looks like from two to three thousand feet which is fairly low actually um yeah. as i jump open my parachute fly it around and then land we're gonna uh, ryan's gonna share with us his skydiving rig as he call it calls it and talk a little bit about uh the frequent questions he gets asked about skydiving and share with you um some information if you'd like to learn to skydive how you could go about that so yeah take it away ryan tell me what's the most frequent question you get asked um I think, so for people that are interested in jumping, um, besides saying like, how could you jump from a perfectly good airplane? I think the biggest question I get is um, like, what happens if something goes wrong? <laughs> so usually I kind of start off by saying, first of all, this is what the rig looks like. So this is what I wear for when I skydive. I will be wearing this um, for the 57 jumps. This is one of four that I'm going to be using. Um, so the main parachute's at the bottom. The reserve parachute, just in case, is right here on the top. And this is what the other side, so this is the harness. Um, this is what that looks like. So basically when I'm wearing this, um, this is in the front, so like on my chest more mm -hmm. or less. Um, and again, this is the back side of it, so some people call it a backpack. It's more, it's called a container actually. But um, So yeah, if, if something were to go wrong, which is fairly rare, you know, pretty unlikely, but not as big a deal as uh, some people make it out to be on TV, right, for example. Right, right. <laughs> um, I would pull this handle here, which uh, releases these rings on the top. And all that does is actually just kind of cuts away or chops the uh, main parachute, the one that theoretically could be having a problem. Mm -hmm. And then I would pull this blue handle, on, on mine it's blue, 
Um, and that would open the secondary or the reserve parachute. So I would cut away, open my reserve, and then I would be flying a different color parachute. So really, if I don't like the color of my parachute, I can just change the colors change of it. Change the color. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I've, I've had to do that twice um, in 800 something jumps. Um, that's more than fairly common. Like usually people will go, you know, five, six, seven, eight hundred jumps without having to cut away. Mm -hmm. um, but it happens. It's not a big, it's not as big a deal as it seems. As it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you've had that experience. So, yeah. you know, uh, what was it like the first time you had to do that? Did you know in an instant that you had to do it or did yeah. you think about it for a minute? Kind of. Yeah. I, so we practice and practice and practice. Yeah. So we really like drill safety on every jump. Yeah. So when something does happen, it's kind of like muscle memory. Oh, right. It did actually happen when I was a student. So when I was first learning how to skydive. Um, so I basically just kind of assessed the situation, checked my altitude, made sure I was safe enough to cut away without hitting the ground, you know, before the other before one could open. Yeah. Uh, and then I pulled, you know, pulled the handles and, and it did its thing. Yeah. So tell me, has anyone, to your knowledge, jumped 57 times out of a plane one day? Is this a common thing that divers do? It's multiple in one day? <laughs> it is, like, so I'll typically make between, like, two and maybe seven or eight jumps in a day on, like, a, on a busy day, you know, okay. six, seven, eight jumps. Um, but yes, it is possible to do many more than that in a day. A lot of people have asked me, like, 57, how? I can't imagine you could do that. But, um, Yes, so it definitely is possible to do 50, 60, or even 100 jumps in a day if if you plan properly and just kind of go low, get out, open your parachute, right when you land, put on a new one, and jump right back Thank in the plane. So um, 57 times in a day seems like a big feat, and I understand the folks at uh, Jump Town in Orange, Massachusetts are supporting you with this mm -hmm. um, and supporting the jumps, and and that's where you're, that's your home base for skydiving. Yeah. Um, and tell me a little bit about what they do there and what their facility is like. Yeah, so the cool thing about Jump Town actually is it's it's the first ever commercial drop zone or skydiving center in the country. So we have a really long history. We have the longest U.S. history of skydiving. Um, so what that means is lots of safety, lots of experience. You know, goes into or went into building Jump Town. Um, so yeah, we're located in Orange Mass. Um, I've been jumping there since 2008, I believe, and I got my, my skydiving license there. Um, they're super supportive, and what it comes down to really is um, if anyone ever wants to jump, they can go right to Jump Town, and um, you can make a tandem jump from 14,000 feet, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I recommend yeah. people get a video too. Because any, I've never heard of anyone regretting getting a video, but anyone who doesn't get a video of their first jump, they always seem to regret not getting the video. Right. They always say you regret what you don't do, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, that's this is fantastic, Ryan. And um, you have, so you have uh, the partners are Jump Town and then the um, Cancer Center Community Crusaders yep. who are based in Bennington, yeah. as well as the Southwestern Vermont. Medical Center, Regional Cancer Center, mm -hmm. and Cat TV in Bennington, and GNAT TV. So, yeah. you, you know, Ryan's been able to pull off this great um, collaboration and partnership with all these different organizations to honor his dad and um, support uh, cancer patients uh, who are in our community. And if you'd like to get more involved and learn more and help him out by donating, you can go to his Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, you can also mail in a check and uh, to to his address uh, through, and that's going through right the, through the cancer center. The yep. cancer center, um, are helping you with all the the fiscal agent and financial stuff. Yeah. Um, anything else you'd like to share with the audience today? I think um, another. This is kind of small, but it's really nice. I think a lot of people say, you know, a lot of people have their opinions on Facebook. But one of the reasons why I chose Facebook for a fundraising platform is because they take zero commission, zero fees. So every single penny that's donated through Facebook goes right to the cause directly. Um, I do also like GoFundMe. I do like other platforms, but they understandably do take a small fee. Mm -hmm. But as mentioned, Facebook doesn't charge credit card fees. They don't do anything. They literally cut a check for the entire amount. They're gonna cut this to the Cancer Crusaders directly. And the Cancer Crusaders, that's, they exist to serve patients in the area. Um, they've been incredibly supportive. 
um, everyone you mentioned has, and it's, um, I'm just really excited that this idea is actually happening. <laughs> Come to fruition, yeah, and I think that's a good point. Yeah. Um, and you don't have to have a Facebook account to donate. I don't believe um, so, it should can, work without it. You can um, search for John's 57, Yep. Um, and then you can also send um, you know, checks to the Cancer Crusaders yeah. directly in Bennington. And um, it's such an honor to have you here, and, and this um, project that you're doing for your dad and for the people in our community is really incredible. And and I wish you well, and hopefully maybe afterwards we can get you back on and, and you can, uh, we can do a little wrap-up on That'd be cool. how the project went. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much, Ryan, for coming in today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and we'll see you next time.